Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I have a story that I saw in the news this morning. I thought it was really funny. Well, a lot of you might not think it's funny, but I think it's hilarious. An anti-firearm sheriff who has made public statements many times that he thinks average citizens shouldn't own firearms because they aren't intelligent enough to use firearms accidentally shot himself while cleaning a Glock today. And I think this is a clear case of this particular sheriff projecting himself onto the citizens of his county. I think it's pretty obvious at that point. Uh, it is interesting to note, though, that a lot of people seem to think that all police officers are very familiar and proficient with their weapons. And in my experience, they vary just as much as the average gun owner does in terms of proficiency, knowledge, skill, things like that. I've met police officers who are absolutely amazing shots, extremely knowledgeable and proficient with their weapons. And I have met police officers who are barely competent to pick up a firearm and use it. I'm surprised they can even qualify. And I do think it's interesting that every single person I've ever met who's admitted to me they've ever had an accidental discharge of a weapon has been a police officer. And I know at least three police officers who've admitted this, one of which a friend of mine has shot himself. And one of the most common offenders is the Glock. And it's interesting that it is the Glock. So let's turn this into an educational video because uh, the guy was cleaning the weapon and he shot himself while taking it apart. And that might sound silly to a lot of people, but it happens a lot. At least a dozen police officers of all people have actually done this with the Glocks because they're issued so many of them. Glock isn't going to correct the design flaw that causes that because it's a good design. And it, the people who are doing it are generally completely incompetent with their weapons. And it's because you have to pull the trigger as part of the disassembly process. Now, a lot of people would say, but Jason, you're supposed to always assume a firearm is loaded. And I'm going to say to you that no, that is not true. That is what you tell small children who you're first teaching how to shoot and complete noobs who've never picked up a weapon. Someone who is familiar with their weapon, proficient with their weapon, who particularly someone who carries that weapon on a daily basis should know at all times when their weapon is loaded or unloaded. They should be able to pick that weapon up and look at it and know if it's loaded or not. They should know if they have a round in the chamber or not from their own memory and their own habits. And the given weapon, you either always have a round in the chamber or you always have it empty, no exceptions. Now with the Glock, like the Gen 4 Glock 19 like this, it is really easy to tell if there's a round in the chamber. If it's cocked, this one is clearly not loaded. Anyone who knows Glocks knows when I held it up to the camera that it's not because the trigger is back. The trigger is depressed. The trigger resets when the action opens. So you know for a fact there's not one in here. I can also look down the side. The slide uh, ejector is not sticking out, which also means there's not a round in the chamber. Very straightforward. I can pick this weapon up because I'm familiar with the weapon. I know that. Now, a lot of people do choose to carry it uncocked, and that can be problematic because not only do you lose a round of capacity, but it takes a fraction of a second to cock and draw. Now, a lot of people who are practicing can do it very fast because you can just draw and be ready, but you still lose precious time in a potential life and death situation. So in some cases that could get you killed. So now that you can see it, those familiar with the Glock notice the trigger is forward. It's been cocked. If you look down there, you may or may not be able to see the ejector sticking up. There's a round in the chamber. I can look here, I can see brass. It might show in the light, you can see the, the cartridge in the chamber here. So, now it's loaded. How do people get shot with these? Well, it's because they don't know common sense and how to disassemble a gun correctly. Because the thing is, you always have to, generally have to work the action to <laughs> get the Glock to come apart. So if there's a round in the chamber, they're just going straight to, you know, just dropping the slide release, the, the little tabs here and pulling the trigger. Normally what you do, take it, drop the magazine out, pop the round out of the chamber. It's done. Here's the uh, bullet that was in the chamber. And what you always do to safety check a weapon, you take it, safety check it a couple times. Empty. Now this weapon is ready for disassembly and disassembly does require you to pull the trigger. You pull the slide, slide back slightly, pull these push down tabs, pull the trigger, slide comes forward. That's part of the disassembly process. Uh, they are, these are very easy to take apart by the way, but you actually have to know the, pro the process. If you do that wrong, you don't pull the trigger correctly. You don't get the tabs down at just the right point and the break, it won't come apart. But with a little practice, it's as easy as that. This is one of the easiest handguns to field strip out there. But again, then you put it back together, ready to rock and roll. But the thing is, people don't 
just eject it. They don't double check it. And it's something that only a noob or a rookie with firearms makes mistakes like that. Someone who practices these things all the time, handles them proficiently. It is simply never going to happen. So Glock is not going to correct this. Only morons do this. And in fact, we could even argue that it's Darwinism at work. Anyone who pulls the trigger on a weapon that they're cleaning, that they haven't safety checked it, let alone if they know whether it's loaded or not, if they accidentally shoot themselves, the world hasn't lost anything too big. And in the case of this guy, since he feels most people shouldn't own firearms, well, that would be the same thing. Unfortunately, though, he survived. But let this be a lesson to you guys. You should always know if your weapon is loaded or not. And when you're disassembling a weapon, practice basic safety that everyone who owns a firearm should know. Always clear the chamber, clear the action before you start taking parts off. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.